So far, we've talked about looking at estimating a mean, the difference between two means, a proportion, the difference between two proportions, and all of those times, all of those distributions have been symmetric, whether they're the normal distribution or the t-distribution. Now, along the way, we've neglected the variance. That stops now. So today we're going to talk about estimating the variance in a single sample. Now, the variance isn't necessarily going to be in a symmetric distribution. In fact, it follows a chi-square distribution. So we'll be using the chi-square distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom to estimate the variance of a single sample. So when we're looking for an interval estimate of our population variance, we can use the statistic x squared equals n minus one times the sample variance divided by the population variance. Now, S squared, our sample variance, is an estimator of our population variance. Now, this is going to follow a chi-square distribution by a theorem that we had back in chapter eight, it's theorem 8.4, and the n minus one is gonna be the number of degrees of freedom that we have. So, if we're looking for a probability that chi-square one minus alpha divided by two is less than x squared, is less than chi-square alpha divided by two, that probability is gonna be one minus alpha. So this should look like the confidence interval setup that we have, that we're looking to see what the probability is that our statistic is between these two chi-square values and that probability is going to be one minus alpha. Now, similar to how we have with all of our confidence intervals before, I can substitute in for x squared and I get this new probability with n minus one times the sample variance divided by the population variance substituted in for x squared. Now, remember the thing that we want to be estimating and finding an interval estimate for is the population variance, which is in the denominator of my center term. So to solve for that, we're first going to get it by itself. We're gonna isolate it in the denominator by dividing everything by n minus one divided by the sample variance. And we will get this. Now, I can invert this. I can invert every term of this. And if I do that, then that'll get me the population variance in the center the way I want it to be. However, when I invert it, when I invert all of the fractions, it's going to flip the order of my inequality. So when I do so, you'll notice that the term that was on the right is now on the left inverted, and the term that was on the left is now on the right inverted. So namely, chi-square sub alpha divided by two comes first instead of second, and chi-square sub one minus alpha divided by two comes second instead of first once I invert. And getting this interval, I've now solved, this is going to give me my confidence interval. So if I'm looking for a confidence interval for my population variance, if my sample variance is the variance of a random sample, size n from a normal population, then I can find a 100 times one minus alpha percent confidence interval for the population variance by taking my number of degrees of freedom, n minus one, times the sample variance, divided by chi squared sub alpha divided by two, and that'll be my left, my lower bound, and my upper bound is going to be given by my number of degrees of freedom, n minus one, times the sample variance, divided by chi squared sub one minus alpha divided by two. 
Now, chi squared sub alpha divided by two and chi squared sub one minus alpha divided by two are chi squared values, which you can find in the chi squared table with n minus one degrees of freedom. That's going to tell you the row that you're working in leaving areas of alpha divided by two and one minus alpha divided by two respectively to the right. So in the table, you'll go to the n minus one row and then you'll be looking in the columns for your values alpha, alpha divided by two and for one minus alpha divided by two. And each one of those columns, you follow that down, those columns down, and you look in the row that you're looking at for your degrees of freedom, and that will tell you what those chi-squared values are, and that's what you should use to find this confidence interval. Now you may notice that this says that it's from a normal population. We're not going to worry about estimating um, or finding confidence intervals for a population variance from a population that is not normal. We're going to just stick to normal populations for this.